So what are some other things that you wish you would have known before mm -hmm. you got married? I wish I would have known that women's sex, sex drives increase as they get older and men's decrease. There it is. I was talking to somebody about that the other day. Yeah, I, and they say God don't make mistakes, but ooh, this... This don't even seem right. This not my God. He wouldn't do this, would he? I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm saying like, why? Like, why? I'm peaking. I peaked in the twenties, <laughs> and you peaking in forties. And she going in the forties, and it's basically I, I got to let her have a boyfriend. That's what it seemed like. Like you, I need help. Okay, let me. Uh, I need this. I need help. We put porn to shame. <laughs> is isn't just about where I give Talk birth to Talk about babies. it. Talk. The womb is about where we give birth to perfect. Talk. I was basically all of her nevers. I never imagined my journey would inspire people all over the world. You have set a standard in love. I was dating a young lady who helped me heal. Wow. This woman is a ride or die. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. I had 19 attorneys at one time that were speaking into my ear. 19, 19 attorneys. Attorney. My, my, my last relationship, you know, it did a number on me. What you did not know is I had a whole little situation lined up that evening. Your transparency is literally setting people free. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Um, thank you. I received that. Let one of them Barbie doll bodies walk over here. He gonna say, Dear future wifey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're gonna go right in that box. I'm Latarius R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latarius R. Whitfield. Man, Man, we've been having an amazing time in this season. Season five has been absolutely amazing. And this episode is going to be really, really dope. But before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? Come on, man. If you're still shacking up with us, why don't you hit that subscription button and subscribe. Turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about our upcoming episodes. And those that are watching us on streaming platforms like Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, go and leave a review and uh, rate it five stars. Man... You know, sometimes you meet certain individuals in your life and across your path that you just click with them automatically and feel, feel like you've been knowing them for a long time. Well, that's what this guest did for me when I met him a couple of months ago at one community singles conference. And I said, bro, I got to have you on my podcast because he keeps it so real. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. My new homie, Marcus Wiley. What's happening, bro? What's up? How you doing? Great, great, great. And thank you for keeping your word. Because a lot of pastors be like, I'm going to get you at my church. And I ain't been there yet. So you thank you. Yeah. Thank you, you know. So you, had, you asked me a question. You asked me a question before we started. What was that question? Yeah, I wanted to know, why did you call this Dear Future Wifey? I was telling you that... Um, I, I, I named it Dear Future Wifey because it's my journey. I'm documenting my journey before I meet my wife. Yeah. And um, I've been writing these letters that I put in that box. And How many letters in there? About, about shoot, almost 100 now. Well, you better find a wife who can read or, <laughs> or who like to read because, <laughs> you know, these, these new ladies, like, just get to the gist of the letter. Oh. Uh, what you need me to do? Well, let me tell you something. They ain't going to work for me. If it's a woman that can't read, I don't think we're going we gonna to make it. Bro. Well, she might can read, but you know, that's a lot. I mean, that, that, that's a, a hundred letters. Well, well, the point is that she can, she can anytime we go through a rough patch or whatnot, oh, okay. she can go pull something out. Nice. You know, so, nice. Yeah, so. don't, don't, don't go to the Bible. You go to these letters. <laughs> you go to these letters that I done wrote. Put the Bible down. <laughs> Paul don't know what Latera's need. <laughs> he don't. You know what? This is a good point because that's why I have you on this episode. This episode yeah. uh, is titled mm -hmm. What I Wish I Would Have Known Before I Got Married. Mm. And I talk to people a lot. You talk to a lot of pastors. They say, I said, there's no manual for marriage. And they say, yes, it is. It's called the Bible. Mm. And you shook your head no. Why? Yeah. Why do you say that? I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm a preacher's kid grandkid and great grandkids so i do believe in the bible and right. it has some great things in the bible right but i don't think it can prepare you for dealing uh i mean all the way let me right. say, give you some tips yeah but this marriage thing two humans coming together that god he may put us together but he may but he may didn't i mean you know i mean you know what i'm saying you you don't really know you, don't really you, know. you hope he did you hope he did <laughs> yeah yeah i just met you at the sprint store i'm sorry i didn't know 
<laughs> I didn't know. Hold on, know. before let me give y'all a disclaimer. <laughs> so Marcus is a well-known comedian. Uh, do you consider yourself a Christian comedian or just a comedian? I'm just a comedian. You know, uh, you know, saying you're a Christian comedian is kind of stupid to me. <laughs> I mean, because you have a lot of Christians, and like, uh, you know, it's not a Christian firefighter. We only put our save fires. You know, Christian pest control. We only kill save roaches. I mean, you know, so, so I'm just saying, like, I'm. The Bible says, since we talk about the Bible, about you'll the Bible. know the tree by the fruit. So there it is. I'm a comedian. Now you let me know what type of type of tree I am. You know, <laughs> so did you say we only kill save roaches? I mean, because because that's what it's implying. If I'm saying I'm I, you, I'm a Christian pest control, so people just now can you get these roaches out the house? I want the save ones killed. The unsaved ones, <laughs> I just just want them out. That's all. Okay, well, you put some perspective around that thing. Yeah. And so when we talk about, let me ask you this: How long have you been married? So we don't have your better half here. Yeah. Um, how long have you been married? So in August twenty third of twenty twenty two, if the Lord say the same, I will be married twenty five years. Marcus, why you say if the Lord say the same? Because black love is day to day. And today is a good day. When I left the house this morning, we was on one accord. <laughs> Everything was cool. I promise you we were straight. But who knows? By the time I get out of this here look, this interview, man, shoot. Who knows? So when you look when you when you look at that, you're about to celebrate twenty five years. And when you think about yeah. the all the stuff that y'all probably uh come through. Yeah. I want you to say one word that speaks to that journey. One word. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, I can't do one word. Come on, one word. Steel. Steel. Yeah. S T I L L. S T I L L. S T E A L. No. <laughs> That's a good one. It depends on the day. But I was going with the S T I L L. Steel. Why you say steel? I mean, because after everything, you know, I still want her. You still want her. And I. I think she still want me. So uh, I heard my grandfather, you know, my grandparents was married um, 70. 70? Yeah, they was married 74. My grandfather just passed. I think it was 74 years. They made 74 years. And I asked them, how do you stay with somebody, you know, that long? I mean, you know, I was just asking him. I told him, don't give me no Bible answer either. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and he just told me, man, I still, I still want your granny. You know, and that's how he's, I still want you, granted. That's my lady. And so um, I was like, still. Still. I got it. That's powerful. 74 years? 74 years, years yeah. 74 years. Mm -hmm. So what, what did you think of when you, like, as you watched them be married that long, what are some nuggets that you may have picked up along the way without them even sitting down and telling yeah. you uh, what's been keeping them Yeah, up? I think my grandfather, he modeled what a man slash husband kind of looked like. Now, it may be out of style in today's time. Talk about it. But, um, you know, I've never seen my grandmother worry about a light bill, a car note, yeah. you know, none of that. He didn't put that type of stress, you know, on his lady. Even if he probably was having some money situation, she didn't know anything about it. Um, uh, my grandfather always kind of like um, uh, emphasized time. You know, like, and what I mean by time, like, I'm an on-time guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he always would say, like, when you're on time, going places at work, at church, blue, blue, then your, your timing is even better in your relationship. And so, really? yeah, he was just talking about, you know, because you, you have time down so well, you know the time to, when you need to be strong, the time you need to, okay, I can't come in there with the iron fist today. She need a little, mm -hmm, yeah. you know. So, you know, I think those are the two things he That's really did. That's good. Yeah, yeah. You know, I come from a, <laughs> nah, nah, I'm, playing, I'm, playing. I'm playing, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, those things, <laughs> those things I try to, you know, emulate from my grandfather. That's dope. So when you think about the things that you wish you would have known before you got married. I wish I would have known that whatever you like, or didn't like, let me start there. Whatever you didn't like before y'all got married, it's still gonna be there when you get married. There it is. Yeah. 
Because a lot of times people think marriage, oh, we're going to get married. Now nice. if things are going to be all right. Yep. Things are going to change. No, things are amp- actually going to amplify. 100%. Amplify. You know, yep. it's going to be a whole different type of thing. So yes. I had to learn, you know, to accept, oh, this is just her. And, and vice versa. She had to learn, yeah. you know, this is just him. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't changing. You know, that was interesting that you brought up that because that's the reason why I ended up getting a divorce seven years ago. Yeah. And she said to me, she said, I believe that I was able to accept the things about you that didn't change, but you just never accepted from me what wouldn't change. Mm. And I was like, wow, you caught me. When what happened was I was a part of this this uh, men's ministry at my church called the Thousand Men of Prayer. Okay. And so once a week we would fast for 24 hours a day. The first year I fasted saying, God, I wanted my wife to change these certain things that I felt like were very difficult for me to deal with. Mm. And then that didn't happen. Mm. And so the second year I fasted for me to be able to accept those things if they don't change. Mm. And that didn't happen. And mm. so then I just said, you know what? Some of these things are some non-negotiables that it's time for me to just walk away from this marriage. Gotcha. Hardest decision I've ever made as a Christian man. Yeah. Uh, but she and I are still cool friends this very day. Uh, mm. But it was me just owning up to what I felt like I needed for the rest of my life. And so when I hear people like you speak like you speak about that, then yeah. I go, wow, did I... Did I choose the easy way out because marriage is for better, for worse, and, yeah. and for richer and for poor and for sickness and uh, through sickness and health? All these beautiful, right, uh, right. contradictory <laughs> statements. You right. know what I'm saying? It'd be like yeah. this extreme or this extreme. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. And it's like, um, yeah. And so a, a couple of seasons ago, we unpacked those marriage vows. Mm. When you look at those things where you said that the things that I didn't like before I got married mm-hmm. and you stayed and she accepted you and Mm -hmm. you accepted her and y'all still may see those same things rear his ugly head up uh, in y'all's marriage. How do you deal with it differently? Okay, let me say this first. One, that's why I don't fast. Uh, No, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Hey, continue to fast. That was just a joke. That was just a joke. Um, So when I look at it like like this here, let's use those vows. Yeah. So then they typically say, um, for better, for worse. Yeah. And um, which is an indication that worse is coming. Yes. Like, I don't know who wrote the vows. I don't know if it's in the Bible. But whoever wrote them, they was like genius. Yeah. You know, because worse is coming. Yeah. And so if you're around here, <laughs> you know, kicking it, thinking it's always better, man, worse is coming. Yes. And so, and then the other one was what? Um, uh, rich or poor. Yeah. Most of the times, people just look at that as monetary, when it's more so poor attitude, poor work ethic, poor perspective. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I think over the years, my wife and myself, we've both grown to richer attitude, Mm. richer perspective, Richer work, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it 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 it, it, it wasn't overnight. It, there it is. It got better, and then the other one, sickness and in health. And a lot of times we just think of a physical, physical health. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, oh, because it's, it's the, some sicknesses we accept. Oh, he got cancer. Yeah. Oh, she got this, and yeah. it's like ah. Uh, but no, what about that sickness I got with these streets? You know, because see, people don't want to use that as, as a sickness. No. He liked them streets. He, <laughs> uh, you looking at your watch out, but he should be tired of them clubs. No, 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 I ain't tired. I ain't tired. I ain't tired yet. You know what I'm saying? That's a song they sing in church. I'm not tired yet. So I've been running for the club a long time. And so, you know, people have sicknesses with, with those type of yeah, things, whether it's fact. pornography or, yeah. you know, a lot of things. Yeah. And so... When you say this in front of the church and the family and, 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 and everybody, God, hey, you you know, you were so happy that day. Oh, I do. I do. Yeah. Well, this is what comes with I do. There it is. You know, so uh, fortunately, we've been able to, you know, hang on. But I want to ask you this. So when you decided after your fast failed, when you decided and y'all was going to go away, did y'all separate? No, uh, we never did separate. We okay. never separated. We stayed in the house. I always said if I separate, I just I would never go back. You know, Doc, we did. 
Y'all separated. We separated. So, you know, they always tell you about like a seven-year itch. Yes. Yeah, I, think I did a whole TED Talk about that. Yeah, Yo, you did it? Yeah. yeah. I think I was came in maybe, maybe between five and seven, somewhere up in there. Yeah. And we didn't, it wasn't no infidelity issues or nothing like that. I just thought I married the wrong young lady. Yeah, that's what that's I thought. What I, that's what I thought. I'm just saying, I just thought I married the, the wrong young lady. I was like, you know, and she probably had some issues with me as well. Yeah. You have to get her on here to get her side. But... <laughs> But since I'm here, listen to me. And so I thought I just married the wrong one, yeah. right? And so we got separated for six months. Who decided to move out the house? Me. You said, hey, I, 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 hey, this ain't no, 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 no. The beautiful part is we didn't have money at the time. We lived in an apartment. Mm -hmm. So I gave her all the furniture in that apartment mm -hmm. and got her established. Because I'm not. Oh, you moved her out? I moved her out. And I moved out too. I, oh, I just moved out the apartment. Listen, it's me. We both leaving this. <laughs> I'm getting a cheaper apartment. Go find, go find you an apartment. And so, but I gave all the friends because I remember my daddy telling me a long time ago, man, if you ever fall out with your lady, don't be fighting over who get a TV yeah, and yeah. who getting the chair. Man, just you start all over. That's what I man. did. That's what you I know, did. That's what he told me. So. Yeah. Gave her everything, make sure she was straight. Cause I don't have no malice yeah. towards her. Yeah. We just don't, we just not working. I'm thinking, you know, this ain't the right one for me. Right. So man, six months, you know, cause I'm, cause I'm in, in the process though. I'm, we getting divorced though. Yeah. 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 And man, I ain't gonna lie. It's crazy. My comedy had took off during this separation. I, I was, I had started doing comedy, but I wasn't popping. Right popping. Then. Then I got on TV and they put my website on TV and you know what? It was on BET. And so they run your stuff over and over. So <laughs> churches just start calling me, right? <laughs> and I'm in Miami when I did the show. And I'm in Miami and we do the show. Latere, some girls coming, they half naked. You want the coconut, Poppy? You were so funny tonight, Poppy. <laughs> and I couldn't even enjoy these coconuts <laughs> because my whole mindset. Because the only girl who knew the magnitude of this moment. Oh, God, dog. Because we've been pillar talking. Oh, Yo, you don't went there. You we been, went I'm there. just saying, we've been pillar talking, yes. babe. One day. I, this comedy is about to take us. <laughs> Trust me. I, I feel it. I, finally, I done latched all these jobs I done had. Yeah. Finally, I done got something I think going to work. And so we did. I mean, so my manager was like, man, call your wife. I was like, man, I ain't calling her because you know, my pride and ego, <laughs> I ain't calling her. But I couldn't even enjoy the coconuts because, <laughs> because, and so I get on the flight, long story short, I get on the flight, I'm on my way back to Houston and God appears. Watch this, I know this, this doesn't even sound right coming from me. I hear a, a still small voice that the, the, says, we're still coming again. Yeah, yeah, the still, still, still. ego. And this is what God told me. He said, so let me get this straight because that's how he talked to me. I don't know. I talked to y'all. But he said, so you're going to divorce her because she do some things, a few things you don't like. But I haven't divorced you. And you do a whole lot of things I don't like. That wasn't even the part. I was like, okay, I heard that voice. So he said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. Now that's what hurt. That was like, no, ah! nah, that ain't what you're doing. So man, that plane landed. Oh God! I went over there, knocked on her door. She was like, "What's up?" I was like, "We got to get back together." <laughs> and she was, she knows, because she was like, "Hey, I'm single. I'm." She kind of like enjoying herself now. You know what I'm saying? She was like, why? I was like, because God has spoken. <laughs> Let the church say amen. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, we got back together and, you know. But was it easy to work from that that place? You you showed up, you said, hey, this. Then, mm -hmm. like, was it immediately that y'all wait to finish out y'all leases? The way, like, How did y'all transition? Oh, yeah. So when her lease was up, I mean, so. I got a cheaper apartment in that same building we lived in. It was like oh, a little mid-rise. Okay. So now I went down to Lee's and I said, hey, man, we're going to get back together. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's why it's good to have good relationships with people. And they moved me, uh, upgraded me to a two-bedroom. Yeah. And then she came, you know what I'm saying? And then, boom. That's how we. That's how we. That's how we worked it out. We got Rihanna over the last. <laughs> that's, that's how we worked it out. <laughs> and we've been, and, you know, we've been rolling ever since. And watch this. It, it was Absolutely the best decision we made. And let me why? tell you why. Yes, I was going to ask you. Because 
<laughs> I thought I married the wrong one. But she absolutely, positively is the right one because of where we at now. I, we, or I'm just using me, wouldn't have made it this far without her. Now, she, I almost messed up. My wife, my wife, listen, she run everything. And I don't mean my business. I mean everything. I can't even function. I can get another girl, but I can't get another her. She really the only chick I've ever loved. Like, I mean, I ain't one around. I'm in love. Oh, I, I, that's not just that's not my type, but I don't do that. I wish I could. But she the only one. Like, like man, I need her. If that girl leave, man, I don't even know how to change the thermostat at the house. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to do nothing. <laughs> and I think sometimes in a relationship, that's how you need it. Because some people say, well, that's not good. No, that's absolutely that good. That is good. That is good because I need. There it is. Yeah, I there. need her. That's good. Yeah. Because what happens, we get so independent that it's like, that's why people are able to just up and leave the person. Because exactly. they're like, I can do bad all by myself. I, exactly. It's like, why do you say I can do bad all by myself yes. instead of say I can do great? I can do great. <laughs> I need her. I need her for stuff and she need me for stuff. And even though sometimes it may cause a, a disagreement or an argument, still. We argue, like we can hang up on each other's face, right? Which was hold on, no, let's talk about that. <laughs> let's talk about that. The other day I talked to you, <laughs> and I said, "What you mean you going? You, it's a it's a off and on type of thing that you may make in 25, 25 years." What did you say, bro? What happened? So I'm I'm in Atlanta. I'm going my way home. We just finished doing the show. I had called after the show. We was all pleasant. Everything. Hey, babe. Hey, I can't wait to get home. Oh, your mama made gumbo. Blah, blah. Everything was good. Then they took me out to eat, you know, after my show, after my performance at the church. I get to the airport. I called her. I said, hey. She was like, hey. I was like, what's up? She was like, I'm just kind of dozing. I say, well, uh, did y'all eat? She was like, yeah. I said, and I was like, did you eat um, the gumbo that my mama fed? She was like, nah, we ate this pasta. I said, well, my son, Chase, what he ate? Pasta. Well, my daughter, Charlotte, pasta. I said, boy, they just going to do whatever you do. You, you, I said, kids going to just follow you. Whatever mama do, they going to do. They got an independent thing. Man, I don't know what button that pushed. That girl clicked. That girl what you mean? They doing, they ate what they want to eat. That's it. And so watch this. I say, in a joking manner, hey, 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 did church work for you today? Did church work for you? You did. She, man, she started going left. So I just hung up the phone, click, click. <laughs> and I said, no, you did not hang up the phone in her face. Yeah, I just hung up the phone. And, why, and why'd you hang up the phone? Because I, my energy wasn't even right. Like, I promise you, I had no venom when I was saying, this was just... I'm a comedian, man. I mean, and I know so when you're married to one sometimes, I don't want to hear all that. So I get that. <laughs> but I wasn't coming from nowhere. So anyway, but watch this. I'm going to show you something. When I'm talking about I need you. Yeah. I get to my gate. I'm booking for my tour so people need information. Yeah. Well, who I, who I got to call? <laughs> I got to call the person, the person I just <laughs> hung up in her face. <laughs> but we have grown and matured. So Kyle her, she, this is how she looking like. No, cause we FaceTime. She, I said, babe, I need you <laughs> to. Da, 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 da. She got up, went to the computer, <laughs> did what she did, hung it, just hung up the phone. <laughs> and so it's possible, it's very possible <laughs> to function <laughs> even when you ain't, you know. So then, watch this here. I had to call her another time before I got on the plane. Do the same thing. Cause like I say, people booking the tour, so boom. boom. Then when I got home, she come pick me up. Hey, hey, mm, kid, like, like, like what happened earlier? Never happened. And watch this here. Nobody has to say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. And blah, blah, blah. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't do it. Yeah. But, but it's just understood. It's understood. You know what I'm saying? Y'all been rocking with each other that long. Yeah. Y'all just be like, yeah, no, yeah, you know. Y'all forgive each other of moments like that. Yeah. Because y'all really truly understand each other. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean. 
Marcus, we be on the road or something, and then you put doubt in it. What well, you mean by hope? I ain't put no doubt. I'm just saying, you know, you don't want to appear too strong on these platforms, and then <laughs> something go wrong. And he was talking big talk when he, you know, so you just said, yeah. <laughs> you give, give a little gray area in case yeah. you walk, in case you get home and she done backed up everything. <laughs> I get over to him, I was like, oh, man, come on, I got to go back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I thought we had to understand. I thought we had to She understand. was building a whole nother life yeah. outside of me. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened to one of my guys at the barbershop. What happened? He comes home and his his wife packed up. Packed up, moved on, him and his son, with, with their son. Boom. And served him the papers. He, but he, he didn't see it coming? He didn't see it coming. His story to us is he didn't see it coming. He said a couple of nights before that, everything was cool. Now he's done some things. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm not. He's not innocent, but he. I'm just saying. But this particular, <laughs> this particular in, in, in this segment, everything was good. He thought, and then voila, yeah. You know, I hear about that a lot with women. You know that 80 percent, over 80 percent of marriages or divorces are filed by women. Yeah, yeah. It's it's women that will literally just pack up and be gone. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And, wow. uh And so that old school stand power that we saw grandma and great grandma have that, yeah. you know, uh, grandpa, a uh, great grandpa could mm -hmm. have kids all down the street. And, yeah. And <laughs> whole nother just, family. Whole nother family. Yeah. She like, hey, well, bring them on over here. I'm going to feed them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like it's, it's a different level. These women right now, you get the lights cut off, they gone. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they like, yeah. I'm not going to deal with that. What, what do you think? Why do you think that shift has happened? Yeah, I think... You may have mentioned it earlier um, because the ladies today are so independent, Yeah, you know, to where uh, they don't need, you know, I mean, I don't need you. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and they, and watch this, not only do they not need you, they let you know yeah. that they don't need you. <laughs> and so, you know, I think that's a lonely place for a husband yeah. Yeah. to, you know, be not needed. Yeah. He know them. That he that that he's not needed, and I think that's that's probably tough on on a cat, you know. Uh, Bishop has this video. Bishop TDJ has got a video going viral that talked about uh, the masculinity in women nowadays, mm. um, and he said that 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 shift is is just not a good look okay. because. Um, a man does want to feel needed. He does want to feel got to. Yeah, because other than that, he's like, well, what is my what is my point? You know, he what what to. is my purpose in, in in your life? If you can do all this without me, you can have a kid without me. You can you can build a house, buy a house. You can have a, everything you that you typically men will find as a value system in his heart to say, I want to provide this for her. Yeah. That women be like, I can do it on my own. I can do it on you my know own. What I'm saying? And then yeah. those big songs. And like I said, I have a daughter, so I I, I taught her to be independent and be able For to sure. get it on our own but not not to also to the demise of a man that's in your life to yeah. make him feel devalued yeah. but these songs that were uh controlling the airways you okay. know uh um independent you know i n d e p e n d yeah, yeah, yeah. you know all that stuff is like it was the anthem for women oh for sure and it began to create a culture, a culture of women yes. that was just like yeah you know, i could do it all about all on my own mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. and and that's what and that's what a lot of them are doing and it's kind of hard you know i don't want to speak out of turn but i do know probably and it's unfortunate so i'm not saying anything but i know the more independent a sister is it's probably going to be harder for to get married for to get mad yeah again yeah. i don't want don't don't no, no you tell me you tell the truth that's that's, that's, that. that's a thing <clears throat> that we don't we don't really talk about you mm -hmm. hear it. Well, we hear it as such a negative uh, thing where you have this red, red pill, this manosphere uh, group of people who, you know, they they beat women up so bad mm -hmm. uh, about their independence and not giving credence to the reason why they become so independent is because sure. the lack of men because the lack life. for sure yeah for, for sure daddy wasn't around so yeah. mama had to raise the kids by by herself mm -hmm. and so they mirrored what mama did and then here they are being upwardly mobile females that are saying hey listen i ain't got no man i ain't finna wait on the man to take me on my trip yeah. i ain't finna make, wait on the man to get me this house i ain't finna yeah. wait so they had to do it out of quote unquote necessity, necessity. and then it became sure. a culture for them for sure and then that that balance so the one 
woman that knows how to balance that out well yeah. to be able to say, yes, I'm independent. Yes, I got money. Yes. yes, I do this or whatever. But I will desire to share this with a partner. No doubt. That's a beautiful heart to be in. No doubt. Because when it's the other way around, then the man would just be like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm just I'm just a, I'm just an added. I'm just another goal that you accomplished exactly. in your life. And exactly. You, just, you, you prop me up right here. And you yeah. like, like an like, ornament. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> so what are some other things that you wish you would have known before mm -hmm. you got married? I wish I would have known that women's sex, sex drives increase as they get older and men's decrease. There it is. I was talking to somebody about that the other day. Yeah, I, and they say God don't make mistakes, but ooh, this this don't even seem right. This not my God. He wouldn't do this, would he? I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm saying like, why? Like, why? I'm peaking. I peaked in the 20s. <laughs> And <laughs> you pick it in forty. And she going in the forties, and it's basically I, I got to let her have a boyfriend. That's what it seemed like. Like you, <laughs> I need help. Okay, let me. Uh, I need this. I need help. And you know, <laughs> I know it ain't biblical. She, she need a twenty year old. Guys, let get a twenty year old boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, because because what it is is, <laughs> I'm being worn out, and and watch and I'm doing stupid stuff. To try to keep up, trying to maintain. What's the, what's the, like stuff that, first of all, like, so I'm drug free, right? This was one thing I can say. I ain't never took drugs, yeah, you know. Me However, they have these sexual enhancement drugs <laughs> that are. <laughs> that, 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 oh that they. That, that you need to take. <laughs> in just order to keep up. In, to keep up with your wife. Now, I ain't talking about in the streets. I'm talking about with your with wife. Your wife. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be different if I'm in these streets. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to, man, I'm trying to do. No, this with her. <laughs> when did you get like this? And so, you know, I'm taking the Viagra and the, the Cialis, Cialis and, and the Levitra. And, and, and then the guys at my barbershop, because, you know, my barbershop, that's my second church. Yeah. yeah. And so they come and say, oh, them, them take them pills. You got to take the one to the gas station. <laughs> And I'm the gas station. I don't even want to eat from the gas station. Why am I, some pills from the gas station? So they tell me to get the pills from the gas station. And these pills, they named after animals. Rhino and Donkey D and Gorilla Man. I mean, just all this. <laughs> Listen. Oh and so oh I'm trying to take this here. These, I don't even know if this stuff SDA approved. <laughs> I'm taking this stuff. Oh, trying geez. to keep up. Watch this now, Latez, with my wife. <sighs> she coming in now. I done took this pill and drunk the uh, uh, required glasses of water. And I got a migraine headache, a stuffy nose. I can't feel the left side of my body. She in there talking about, you ready? I'm like, man, you better call the ambulance. I'm sick. <laughs> I'm about to die. <laughs> Trying to keep up with you. You said you can't feel the left side of your body. Man, man, no listen. Left side, no. Okay, I'm numb. <laughs> man. So I didn't know that. I promise you, like, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that they go up and we go down. And so now I understand why when I see older men <laughs> take an aspirin before we go to bed at night or have a little glass of brown, brown liquor. You don't judge him. He try. <laughs> So he trying to stay in the game. Okay. Yeah, he trying to stay in the game. Oh God. I get it now. Marcus, thank you for shedding light. Well, I'm on, just saying. On the epidemic that's out here. <laughs> it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. <laughs> I was at my boy Jay Barnett. Um, yeah. He had this thing called Hill, uh, the Just Hill Bro Tour. Okay. And they did, and they touched on that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's like that's something that is not talked about. You know what yes. I'm saying? And you get and, it, and like you said, it is a shift. It's like yes. women start going to menopause. They they oh, yes. heat, you know. And she it's got like, the fan on at the bed. <laughs> I'm like, it's freezing in here. <laughs> Listen, I'm there. I, I mean, trust me. And and again, again, because this is a shot. It's a, it's almost a shot. Uh huh. To the ego. Oh, it's a shot yeah. because now I'm 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 young her now. Yes. Hey, just hold me. Let's. <laughs> I mean, let's just cuddle. I'll be the little spoon. You can get behind me. You know. <laughs> I mean. Let's just chill. I mean, let's watch TV and 
We got the water and the popcorn right here. We married. I mean, we ain't we ain't got nothing to prove, do we? I mean, <laughs> I ain't in competition, am I? I mean, I'm man. Did you say you would be a little spoon? I'd be the little spoon. Nah, I don't, man. I ain't got to, you get behind me. Because <laughs> it seemed like you in charge. <laughs> you in charge. Nah, I'm, I'm not in charge. <laughs> what's, what's another thing you wish you would have known before you got married? Let me see. What else I wish I would have known? I wish I would have known oh, before God. I got married oh, that those quote unquote wifely duties that maybe my grandfather um would get, you know, from my grandmother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these, these 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 new ones, they they not like that. But let's talk about these wifely duties. What wifely duties yeah, are we? So you know, about? old school, uh huh, my grandfather, you know, my grandmother cooked breakfast. <laughs> And dinner, because they typically probably do something for lunch. They, yeah. You know, they be moving around. But breakfast, dinner, every day. Yeah, yeah, that was a wifely duty uh, back in the day. Now, I'm not, I'm, please don't at me. I'm just telling you how it went. And so, you know, when I thought, you know, when we got married, I'm thinking, you know, shoot, you know, breakfast, you know, dinner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you know when I got married, my my ex wife told me, "No, don't expect me to cook." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my whole marriage, I ate out still ninety nine percent of the time. No. So I was just I was just eating out, and I said, and then to me it was like I've been <laughs> single, so I was yeah. eating out all the time, and I kept saying, "Well, I guess I just it's the same doggone thing." Now don't get me wrong, I ain't married for a cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so. I wasn't tripping, but just because I ain't married for your cooking <laughs> don't mean don't cook, though. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I ain't married for it, but I wasn't like my grandfather. But, you know, my wife, what she ended up doing, because now she's a, she, we, her name Erica, we call her E. Garvin now. Oh, she be cooking like that? Oh, she cooks like that now. Really? Really. That's what I'm, that's what I'm yeah. trying to say. It's crazy just seeing the evolution. <laughs> Because my wife has went from a fixer to a cooker. Mm. You see? Mm. When we first got married, she was fixing. fixing talk about fixing. No, no, talk about fix. What's the difference between fixing and cooking? Well, Break fixing, that down. so fixing is like you fix tuna fish. <laughs> you fix hamburger helper. You fix tacos. You know, a lot of guys, oh my baby cooking tacos, and I know your baby fixing tacos tonight. <laughs> cooking is when you stuff something. It's when you smother something. It's when you saute something. <laughs> cooking is when you preheat the oven on 350 for two weeks. <laughs> that's 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 when you know something. Is it ready yet? Mm, not yet. <laughs> that's that's he's having two weeks. Yeah, that's cooking. And watch this here, because uh, let me put this caveat in there. I've never seen a man not come home when he know a cooked meal yeah. is there. You know that's true. This, this is absolutely true. Yeah, this is true. A cook meal will change a Negro's plans. You call home, hey, what's up? Oh, no, just in the kitchen cooking. What you cooking? <laughs> oh, I just smothered some steaks, mashed potatoes, some green beans, got them little rolls you like, and uh, some tea. I'm coming home. <laughs> he said, I'm on my way. Nah, I ain't going to say it's going to keep him home. <laughs> but he gonna That's come home. on you. But he will come home. But now, nah, man, yeah, man, my wife, she she dibbles and dabbles. She do all type of little things now, you know. <laughs> said E-Garvin. Uh, yeah, e -garvin. she E-Garvin e now. And so, you know. When did I mean, that shift happen? How many years into the marriage? Um, That shift happened, I'm going to say she been cooking now like that mm -hmm. for probably about, I'm going to say 10 years. So the best thing comes to those who wait, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, because I think, I think. What happens, it gets better. I think, now, I don't want to, I think, it, I'm just saying, I think it get better because I think the people in it get better. You know, we make, man, some decisions that I, I would have made in year four or five, mm -hmm. I'm not making in year 24. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm just not making it. And so kind of like, you know, if you can give your spouse room to grow, to grow, like 
even when I've done bad, I wasn't an overall bad dude. Yeah. And vice versa. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. So, I mean, you know, when I talk to cats in the barbershop, you know, we, we've had a divorce pandemic in my barbershop. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'll be telling, I was like, man, you know, I used, I used to tell my wife, okay, if you need 10 things from me and I do seven of them, are we going to concentrate um, yeah. on the three? Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, because one of them three might, might be, be a, a big, big one. A big three, yeah. Might be a big one. Yeah. But do I not get no credit for the seven? Yeah, that's good. And so, you know, we, we just try to, you know, we talk about, you know, we've always had good conversation. You know, we real cool. I mean, she like my homie until it's time. You know, for me to pop one. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you can talk to her about anything? No, that's the, one of the biggest. Um, that's one of the biggest lies ever told. I heard. I heard a pastor say that your wife should be your best friend. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> why you say you. that? Why you say that, Marcus? Why is that? Why is that the biggest lie? It's the biggest lie because I can say something stupid, do something stupid. In front of my best friends, yeah, and they gonna say, "Boy, that's stupid." Yeah, you was stupid. You got what happened. You got you got what you deserve. Yeah, but we're still getting ready to go see the Rockets play. Yeah, we. we you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We are still together. Yeah, ain't nobody tripping. Mm -hmm. Man, now you say that to your tribe with spot. Even though they say, "No, you can tell me anything." No, I can't. I promise you, I can't. I cannot tell you because you're not going to receive it. Matter of fact, what I had to learn, there's another thing I had to learn. Even when talking to my wife, I realize it's multiple people that I'm talking to. So I need to clarify exactly who I'm dealing with at this moment. Unpack that. Okay. So under the umbrella of spouse, you have a business partner, a friend, not best friend, a friend, you have uh, a roommate. You know, you have somebody you co-parent with. You know, it's it's so it's so much that's going under here, right? And so, like me and my wife, we don't share accounts because that's something we tried to do early on. It didn't work for us. Deacon and my dad at church, y'all won. Y'all supposed to share one account. <laughs> Grow up. Uh, that may work. <laughs> that may work for you and, and Miss Ethel, Sister Ethel, but that ain't working for Marcus and Erica. So, oh God. because in the beginning, what would happen was my wife, I'm spending money, she's spending money. Yeah. But I'm a little bit more conscious of the bills. Yeah. And so she would come home and I'm just getting on her. Yeah. When I needed to say, hey, babe, what's up? Listen. Uh, I need to talk to my business partner right now That's because good. my wife ain't gonna like yeah. what I'm about to say. Yeah. Yeah, I need to talk to my business partner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I'm talking to. So I don't always be like, hey, really? You talk to your wife like that? You talking to me like that? No, 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 no. <laughs> Not talking to my wife. <laughs> talking to that girl that spent that money. <laughs> my business. <laughs> I'm talking to her. And you know, because for me, oh, I, God. I'm, I can argue. <laughs> And then once I'm done, it's done. I'm done. Yes, I'm, I am. I'm back. But yeah. you know, my wife, uh, uh, that it, it don't roll like that for her, and may, maybe some other women may not roll like that as well. But for her, now nah, she she need to take a moment. You know, she gonna have to take a moment and kind of, you know, I ain't really dealing with you right now. You know, now she watching TV upstairs and all this. Here. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to be with your kids and all this. Here. You know, I'm. I'm yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm sick. I got it out of I like, got it's, out. Yeah, it's like throwing up. Yeah, oh, I feel, I feel better now. I feel better now. Yeah, I feel better. <laughs> I didn't got it out of I didn't got it out of my system. Oh God. You know yeah. something that, that that's still sticking with me. You said something early on where you said mm -hmm. that these moments that I wanted to share, I wanted to share it with her. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think anybody gets married to get divorced. There it is. I don't think that's the plan. And so when I lied to that girl about how we was going to be together and mm -hmm. how, you know, take a chance with me, because for me and my wife, 
when we got married, I told her I had dreams before you. So what I need you to do is give me five years to chase them. Mm. Right? Watch this. What I told my wife. I need you to give me five years to chase them. And I don't want to hear no lip. Yeah. Like I don't want to hear, because you don't come home, you're going to be at work because you got to get you got to keep a job. So you're going to be at work. Did you say you got to keep a job? Yeah, at that time. At that time, she had to keep a job because I'm trying to. <laughs> I got to go chase my I dream. I got to go chase my dream. And, I, and, she, and she did it. And, and put perspective, and, how old were you during that time? We got married at 24. So from 24 to, to 29. Exactly. So uh, we're going to take a little derailment. Do okay. you think that still apply if, you, if a woman is dating a 40-year-old man? No, not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Why not? Keep that same energy, Mark. No, you can't keep that same energy. He has exhausted a lot of energy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, now, don't get me wrong. She can, but I wouldn't advise it is what I'm saying. I wouldn't advise it. Why would you advise it? I'm just saying he's still talking about I'm trying to rap. Got it. Uh, <laughs> that might not be the move, the plan in God's will, however you want to talk about it. <laughs> How you yeah. want to talk about it? Yeah. <laughs> you go but, put God in it. Yeah, you got to. Sometimes you can use him. They say lean on him. <laughs> you got to lean on him. So you said give me five years. I told her give me five years. And watch this. True story. My wife did not bother me as it relates. I'm talking about career. Yeah. Because I told her, I said, man, it's going to be days you're going to come home from work. And I'm going to be sitting on the couch when you went to work. Yeah. And it ain't gonna look right. I'm mean, because I mean, you know I ain't never been a dummy. It ain't gonna look. It's, it don't look right. I'm on the couch, I right, babe, and you come back home, hey babe. I, it, it don't look good. It's aesthetically, it's horrible. It's aesthetically, it's horrible. But I told her, give me five years, oh, right? God. So at that time, I worked at BT um, for like three of those years. I was a teacher. I was a bank teller. You know, I worked on staff at a so church. So you're still working. Huh? You were still working? Yeah, but th during that time, these are jobs that I'm in out. Yeah. You know, I'm not keeping nothing because I'm I'm yeah. I'm, 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 I'm I'm reaching for something. Yeah. And um and so anyway, she um um didn't bother me. And then when the comedy came, you know, and we started seeing, okay, that's when I my gift to my wife is now nah, she ain't got work. Yeah. You held me down for five, yeah, and I'm gonna hold you down forever. Yes, there it is. You, you know what I'm saying? There it is. Now I can do what my grandfather did. Teach you not. My my wife can't tell you what the mortgage is, yeah. what her truck note is, yeah. and not, you know, and that's not a brag. No, that's, I'm that's, just saying that's called sowing and reaping. That's that's what it is. Yeah. So because she did that, boom. And so, um, um, but but to get to your question, which was, I think I slaughtered it. I said, uh, I said, uh, what, 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 what spoke to me is the fact that you said that you want to experience that with her. That, that yes. once you met that goal. So now, I used to hate when I it would appear because I don't know what happens, but and that's how they would frame it back in the day. Oh, he got on, and now, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I didn't want that. Yeah, and then we, and I remember at, at my wedding, man, at my wedding. Oh my god. I got to the door at the wedding, you know, I was like, we got married by my daddy and my daddy church. And I looked in there, man, I saw all them people, her family, my family, and all these people just looking at us. I mean, <laughs> and I remember my cousin was like, boy, are you about to faint? Because, you know, I was getting ready to walk in. And he was like, you better go in there and handle your business. I was like, business? Is that what marriage is? It's business? And so, <laughs> and, and so we just got there and, and all these people, because I remember when we got married and then when we got separated, her mom and her sisters, they would call me. Hey man, praying for you. It was no it was no judgment. Judgment. Hey man, praying for you. Just calling to check on you, see if you all right. Ain't ain't bringing her name, ain't bringing her up. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like I don't know, I know so in a sense, I've married these people. You, you know what I mean, a little bit? And so, and so, yeah, man, I just, you know, I just wanted to, and then I had my grandparents, of course, to um, model all these years. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to grow and and and, and we can look back and be like, hey, man, you know, we, we did it. Have she heard you say that to her? About the fact that the success that you gained 
wouldn't wouldn't have felt so sweet without her being a part of it. Oh yes. What yeah. did she say about that? She just smiled and then you know want to do it. <laughs> I mean, can I say that or is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> you married? You married? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm married. <laughs> we doing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> he said but, she smiled and wanted to do it. Yeah, now nah, yeah, I mean you know, I mean she know it's it's stuff that stuff that we talk about. You know, I'm I'm glad because you know I, I was trying to be gone. Yeah, and my cousin was my lawyer, God rest his soul. He act like he couldn't get the divorce. He done been divorced twice, so I know he know how to do it. But <laughs> but he liked you know my family liked my wife. So they didn't, they was trying to, you know, probably, he was probably trying to just, uh, Give it the land the it and all that. <laughs> and so. <laughs> that is a trip, man. It. That's, that's the yeah. epitome when God says, well, he has joined together, let no man put asunder. Mm -hmm. That you say your cousin was an attorney, mm -hmm. a legit attorney, right? Legit. And, Did and, many divorces. And just, and was just, just delaying your stuff. Now he fumbling. <laughs> now he don't know. He don't know what what, <laughs> what requisition to send in and all that old type of stuff. Yeah. That boy delayed that. That is good. Yeah. That is powerful. That's when I look at God just always, you know, interjecting himself in a situation, trying to stop us from making foolish decisions yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's 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 absolutely amazing. For sure. All right. Before we conclude, I want you to tell us uh, um Anything else in your soul, in your spirit that you've learned in these 25 years of, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and claim that, 25 years. Yeah, yeah go and claim it. Uh, go and claim it. Speak 25 it. years of marriage. What, yeah. what, what, what is something that, like, when you, when you, when you, to single men, mm -hmm. me specifically, someone who was married for two weeks shy of 10 years, oh, okay. called it quits. Yeah. You was in it a minute. Yeah, I was in it. I was, I, like I said, I didn't, I, I, the same thing that you said. I wanted yeah. to stay there. I wanted her to inherit the fruit yeah. of my labor. That's why a lot of stuff you're saying is I know it's by God that you're here is because that was the exact same thing that I was saying. That's why I married her. I yeah. said when I had nothing, I yeah. had a little dream of being this national playwright and producer. Yeah. And she was there and she said to me one day, she said, yeah, I have a, my fear is that once you make it, you're going to leave me alone. Mm. You're going you're gonna to upgrade and go find somebody mm -hmm. else. I said, no, I ain't going to do that. Yeah. And I proposed to her on stage at one of my plays. Place. Oh, uh, dope. Yeah. So I was like, no, nah, you gonna we're gonna we're gonna rock together. Yeah. And so we almost made it to 10 years. But when you mm -hmm. look at that and you say, this is something that I wish somebody would have told me as a man that's been married 25 years, where we have this tendency to think that um the streets seem a little bit more appealing than marriage. You know, it's crazy because once you get married, they're always like, ah, oh, well, you out the game. Yeah, you out the game, player. Why, 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 why do we do that? <laughs> why, 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 why do we get married? The groomsmen, our friends be like, ah, oh, why? Well, hey, you left all these other single women to me. Yeah. You know, more for me. <laughs> like, why, why is it, why is it like this is the ball and chain? What, what is that? Well, I think, and that's what I didn't like about marriage. Yeah. That's one thing I did not like about marriage it had nothing to do with my wife. It had more to do with how others viewed marriage. Yes. At the bank that I worked at, that's where I worked at when we got married and then it got fired. They fired me right after the marriage, a little bit after. That, that was terrible of them to do something like that, knowing we need that money. But anyway. Wait, hold on, stop. Why they fire you? I can't even remember. It was, my, my supervisor didn't like me. I, I just remember that. Yes, she didn't like me. And uh, hold on, but she, how, many how many times you say you've been fired? 16. 16 and, times. And so was it everybody's fault the 16 times? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Some of them firings, I made sure <laughs> that I, <laughs> I can, <laughs> I made sure. You going to fire me? Yeah, get ready for what I'm getting ready to say. <laughs> so, uh, no, 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 no. It wasn't their fault. No, no. Some of them were like this one was that, because that was. I enjoyed being a teller at the bank. I was a teller at bank one. I was a teller at Chase. It was Texas Commerce first. <laughs> See? Then it turned to Chase. But anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so she, she fired me, but, um, um, what was I getting ready to say? He throwing me off. <laughs> he said he got fired. He throwing me off with this firing. You had asked, you said something to me. He was talking about, you was talking about, uh, as a single man or whatever, how we always. Oh yeah. No. So I worked at, I worked at the bank with this young lady and we would go to lunch, right? We would go to lunch when me and Erica was dating. This girl didn't want me. I didn't want her, mm -hmm. but they say, hey, y'all can go to lunch. We'll run the subway, run Jack, you know, just yeah. love to come back. 
Man, the moment we got married, I said, man, we'll get some lunch. I ain't going to rub with you. I said, what? You married? I'm like, yeah, I am. Do I have a disease? She talking about, yes. I said, what? And so, like, it was, it was like, I didn't like that. Like, bro, I don't even want you, and she don't even want me. But it's like, you know, I guess like, no, nah, that ain't going to look right or what. We go, we work here. We go to these little places to get something to eat. We come back. And I, I just didn't like how people, you know, you go somewhere. Oh, he, oh, he married. What is he doing? You know what? Why are he talking to her? Dog. Oh, am so basically, I should just move to a, a man's universe now, just where it's all men. I don't know no sisters no more. <laughs> I mean, if it's not my mama and my grandmother, don't talk to them. Would your wife have been cool with you going to eat with her? Probably not. But I'm saying, no, no, no. But listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying probably not because that's how it's viewed. Yeah. And, 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 and so that's what I mean, like, not because she not, don't necessarily trust me. Yeah. It's just that. It don't look right. It don't look the right. Optics don't look right. And then not a woman. Well, can I go out to eat wait, with wait, Dave? Wait. He's like, hold on, now Dave was your ex boyfriend. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like you just trying to pick some man, random man. I'm I work with this lady, and we we would go eat. Now you want to? Well, how would they look if I? Well, it's not you. It, this, it, it, I mean, if you want to go eat with a dude, go go eat. Hopefully he paying. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, but I mean. It's not a tit for tat. It's just my life and your life. If, if if you don't feel comfortable, you should not do it. But I feel fine until she told me I was a disease called marriage. Hello. <laughs> oh God. So why do we? So why do men? Why do we make marriage feel like a, a prison sentence? Then why do? Why is it labeled as that? And I understand there's some boundaries that we should have yes. being married or whatnot. But why is it looked at as being like, oh well, yeah? Because you gotta ask. I mean, yeah. You have left all this independence, mm -hmm. and now you have somebody else to think about. So when your boys say, "Hey, man, tonight, such and such." Celebrate some man. We gonna be over here at the little sports bar. Yeah. Woo woo. Ah, let me. Ah, let me check. Let me check. Well, it ain't that you getting permission like you a kid, <laughs> but you don't. But because now they say y'all won, yeah. so now I need to see what the well, other the half, half of, me. of me got planned for me. Cause that's what, the, cause that's what they do. They plan. You know, I go, hey babe, um, go. We gonna hang out over here. We going to Hooters watch the game. What's the name? Celebrate. Woo woo. She like, oh no, not tonight. Cause tonight, you know, we supposed to be meeting with such and such. And it's something you don't want to do. So now you got to call. Yeah, I ain't, man, I ain't going to be able to make it. And now, <laughs> you ain't going to be able to make it. And so now it's like, now you're mad at her. You're mad you can't be with them. So you, you, you angry. So it's feel like it's like like prison. <laughs> I mean, I ain't never been to all my people that's been to prison. Who I think it ain't like no prison. I got you. Yeah, they just ain't, it ain't like no prison. I'm tired of y'all comparing the pandemic to prison. It ain't no prison. I got it, but I'm just saying, for those of us that's never been, um, I imagine it's something like this. It's something like, something like this. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I can't do things my way. That's what I get from prison. Oh God! So what would you say to single men who uh, they want to get married, but they they that? That mm -hmm. thing, that marriage, that label, that that the fear of feeling like they lose their independence, that they have no control over their day to day. Yes, um, they got to go ahead and they got. They feel like they got to ask somebody permission for this. They just yeah. all the negative stuff about marriage. Yeah, what are some things that you've learned about marriage? You've done a great job talking about the beauty of marriage, things yeah. that that has refined you as a man. Things that a lot of times we haven't talked about, where mm -hmm. you have the male sex drive been here in his early twenties and early thirties. Mm -hmm. And then it shifts and women become straight up super mm -hmm. freaks. You know what I'm saying? Super. And, and so, so that's something to look forward to as a man, but also like, whoo, yeah. all right. It's, it's, a, it's a stab to the ego. Yeah. I have a whole lot of female friends that have talked about that. They said that, Hey, you know, um, a lot of men aren't, 
mature enough to be able to say, all right, let me go get me some Cialis, some Vi- Viagra or whatnot, because mm-hmm. they male ego, I ain't got to take that. I ain't finna do that. And yeah. then now she's sitting over here, you yeah. know, got to play around with a limp noodle, you yeah. know, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and yeah. it's like, God, like, can yeah. you swallow your ego and mm-hmm. let, let's do this. Yeah. That's a real thing. Yeah. So what would you say to these single men mm-hmm. when they look at marriage as being something that they're losing in rather than gaining? Man, I think life for me didn't take off until I got married. And I don't think that I would be where I'm at today if I was not married. That's just me now. Of course, I'm not God. But I think what marriage did for me, it made me go get it because I knew I had to support and um, support this another individual along with myself and I wanted to show face too. You know, you want to, you know, I hear guys like, what's she bringing to the table? I ain't never thought about what she brings to the table. I'm the table. There it is. You know, I'm the table. There it is. She ain't got to bring nothing. You know, women do that. Like, what do he got? He got a car. He got a house. He has his credit. Man can take a woman. He ain't got nothing. Because I'm the table. I'm going to get you a car. There I'm going to get your credit together. There you know. Is. And so I kind of already knew I, I was, you know, hopefully I knew I was going to do that. So that's what I, I just, you know, for, for the single cats, man, I mean, because I'm, I'm blown away by y'all. Let me say this first. I'm blown away by y'all. These women out here. And I mean, they out here. Love. I travel every weekend. Yep. They out here. And all the ones, you, whatever, whatever kind you want. If, if you want them naked, the naked <laughs> ones out here. If you want them well clothed, they are out here. If you want them slim, if you want them thick, if you want them big, if white, black, yellow, they, I mean, like, you have your pick of the letter. And so, and I know, because you're like, yeah, that's what I'm out here doing. I'm picking them up. (laughs) Which I get. But let me say this. At the end of the day, I wish I could see it how I want to see it. But at the end of the day. No, how you want to say it? Well, this might have a, a, a smidget of a, I don't know, I can see it. Yeah. Hospitals good. don't deal with harlots. This is what I'm telling to the single men. Hospitals, they don't deal with them. So if something ever happened to you, whoever you shacking up with or whoever you kicking it with, if y'all ain't got that paperwork, the hospitals are going to say next to Ken. Talk about it. That's all they talking about. Hey, uh, hey, y'all, Miss Girlfriend, we stay together. We've been together a long time. Uh, next to Ken. Yep. And so, <laughs> That's real. And so, and so you want somebody there that know, I mean, that just, man, my wife know my social security number, my driver's license number. I'm talking about she know all this by memory. Like, I, I mean, she, I'm talking she know. Listen, she can't remember to take that chicken and throw that out. But she know, she know my social security. <laughs> she know my driver's license number. Now, listen, my wife done forward so many cities. Man, she know, man, she, listen. I love it because I ain't got to be there. <laughs> this, let me tell you what's so, what's so beautiful about marriage. My wife can call me. I'm talking to the single man still. My wife can call me, babe. I'm on my way home. I'm about to stop at Papa Do's. Get something to eat. Do you want something? Yes. This is what my wife say. Bye. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got, I don't got, oh. Uh, woo. When we were separated, I remember a girl was like, I'm going to come over. I'm going to, you know, I'm come over there. I'm, I'm at, you know, say such, getting some burgers. You want something? Yeah. Okay. What do you like? I was like, oh my God. Do you like mustard or man? Oh Lord, you don't, you don't know me. You, I can't be with you. You, you don't know I like mustard. No onions with jalapenos on it. Get out of here. <laughs> I gotta get me girl that know me. And I think that's what's live. If I'm talking to single people, man, when you find you somebody that's so into you like that, talk about it. <sighs> talk about can't it. Can't beat it. Talk about Can't it. Beat it. And that's that's worth way more than, you know, all what you're doing. I mean, I'm, I know what you're doing, but I'm saying, I'm saying that <laughs> it's, 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 it's mean little more. 
<laughs> it mean a little more. And plus, if you get into your mid thirties, you're on the decline anyway. You, be- <laughs> you better get somebody that can weather the storm. <laughs> that can weather the storm. <laughs> Yes, sir. Want yes, somebody sir. to still be there? Still, <laughs> still be there, man. Marcus, how can people connect with you? Man, you can go. Uh, I still have a website. I'd like to call That's that good. headquarters. No, you should, should. You know, it's just my name, Marcus D. Wiley dot com. There it is. And then, of course, on the social, on Marcus D. Wiley on Instagram and Twitter, and I think I am Marcus D. Wiley on Facebook. I am Marcus. Do you have a TikTok? D. No, I'm, I I didn't. I mean, it's only so much. I don't want none of the stuff I have, and so all these other things, man. I, I ain't gonna be able to do it. I just got on TikTok a week and a half ago. Yeah, I just because because people kept taking my videos from my uh, from my Instagram and from uh, YouTube, and then they'll get. 60, 70,000, 80,000 Oh, views. for real? Yeah, so I kept saying, people kept saying, here's one of your videos that went yeah. viral on here again. <laughs> I was like, dang, what? And like, you need to get TikTok. I don't want no TikTok. I'm sick of all that. I ain't finna be yeah. a little dancing all on yeah. TikTok. <laughs> you know, I'm like real old school in my mind. I didn't want to get I didn't want to get on Instagram because I thought Instagram just people like taking pictures of themselves all the time. Yeah. So it took me years to get on. I got on Instagram actively in 2020. Wow. It took me that long. I was like, I ain't finna be taking no selfies. I ain't finna take no selfies and put it yeah. all on yeah. <laughs> like, Instagram is whatever you want to make it. All right. People you want to take pictures of stuff all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Take a picture of the food. And all <laughs> take a picture of the food. I'm, yeah. You know, so I was real old school. And then TikTok, I just did it so I could just repurpose yeah. a lot of my content that For I put sure. on Instagram and then put it on TikTok. And so. Man, you're doing good. a fantastic job. I told people that I was coming on here and they, oh, you going you gonna to be on now? I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. I didn't even know it was this serious. I'm not for real. I was like, yeah, I'm on now. I just met, I met him at the, at the thing. I mean, he ready, like, he's cool, cat. Oh yeah, no, I watched that. Me and my fiance, you know, a guy in my church, me and my fiance, we watch it. I was like, oh, okay. God has been so doing, doing something yeah. amazing. The reason why I chose you is because in your set, what's so dope about you? So my my podcast, I coined the moniker Lit. We're gonna live intentionally and transparently. Okay. And so when in your comedy, you're very, very transparent. For sure. And so when I see a brother showing up like that, especially in the church, mm-hmm. and, and and you're always prefacing, like, oh, look, I know, I know you church folks, y'all ain't yeah. like this. But I, I was in the strip club. I'm yeah. telling you, I, I went there because I heard they had some good wings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when yeah. people talk like that, it's like, yes, yeah. you get it. Yeah. Because yeah. so often in church, and you've been a P. K, you know yeah. that we live under these lies. For you sure. You know, we just oh. live under this lies. Oh, I know. I know. I know. And we don't even have to. Why you say we don't have to? We don't have to because we free. <laughs> I mean, see, I can read. That's the only thing about me. I ain't the smartest cat, but boy, I, I can read that Bible. And I know <laughs> after he died, yeah, that broke all that curse. People talk about, oh, that's bad karma. No, ain't no karma in the Bible. <laughs> Uh, all the curses have been broken. Yeah, when he died, it, it freed everything. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm saying is I'm free. So, oh God, and that's what yeah. I love about it is that you talk about transparency, and in your transparency, that's what allows people to really understand. Because even in your comedy, as much jokes as you as as you throw out, sure. so much value in what you're saying. I'm Appreciate sitting. I was it. like, God, that's good. Gosh, that's good. And so God has anointed you in comedy. You Thank know, you. he's anointed you in a way that you can make people laugh and then digest the truth at the same time. While I their mouth is up, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was the truth that just went down that my throat. Truth. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's what keeps happening. And even yeah. in this whole uh, podcast that we just mm-hmm. did is that you're dropping stuff and it's hilarious and it's fun. It's mm-hmm. like, dang. Like, it's moments I was like, uh, he's going to stab me right here. Did I give up too soon in my marriage? What was that? But he don't know my story. <laughs> he don't know my he story. He don't know my story. Shoot. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I'm going to yeah. take truth as truth. For sure. At the end of the day, no matter what it is, I can find the what I consider the perfect wife in my book. Gotcha. And it's still going to be heartache and pain. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to weather. It's going to be some, and people think that just because you go through some hard times, that that, that, that couldn't be my wife. That mm-hmm. can't be my husband because yeah. my husband would have never said this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. no, that's, mm-hmm. that's the pruning process. Mm. The, those beautiful vows that you took, remember you yeah. said those vows. It's not that you're marrying perfect people. You're mm. marrying, marrying imperfect people that's striving for perfection in Christ. No but doubt. They're never going to be perfect with you. Never. And so, and so as you've been, all the stuff you've been saying, I've just been digesting it. So thank you so much for dropping all the gems that you had. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's been an honor to have you. I've, I've admired you for a long time. Thank you, man. Dope, dope guy. Uh, that's why a lot of churches always repeat 
and rebook you over and over again because you're thank a man you of churches. Inter- there it is because yeah. you're a man of integrity. <laughs> One thing about it is that you've always Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Dr. Tony Evans always hire yeah. you to come back to his church. Yes, and they don't they don't thank just you. have anybody on their stage. No, not at all. Hold not on. at all. It's what, pressure. What was the, what was the joke you said about my boy uh, Dr. Evans? You said that when you was, you would be, <laughs> oh, be up- <laughs> when I first started doing comedy. I mean, first start going to Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. You know, every now and then, you know, you'll look at the pastor when you're saying jokes, you know, trying to, you know, gauge in the see, you know, everybody else laughing, but he making, making sure I can get a check. So I look over there and he just be sitting there like this here. And then I, I get off stage, you know, he was like, you know, then Priscilla might say, oh man, my daddy love you. And I be want well, tell him to tell his face that he loved me because he ain't laughed. <laughs> he, 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 wasn't, he wasn't smiling But nah But nah He you know He he fall out laughing now. But that was in the beginning You know I guess he was vetting me out Like Let me see He was looking at me <laughs> But he But actually I told Dr. Tony Evans this Before He's the reason how, Why I do my coming The way I do it Because He came sat down In the early goings And was like Hey When I preach I use humor You know So people can receive it A little better Mm. But since you do humor, you should inject Bible mm. since you're going to be doing it in these churches. Then he just got up and walked off. <laughs> uh, uh, he ain't say bye nothing. It was almost like if you want to perform here, you better sprinkle some more Bible into your little material. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got it. Message. I got it. <laughs> And ever since, <laughs> ever since, since, I'm going to have a little been, message with you. You've just been skyrocketing. Yes, sir. Uh, dropping them gems uh, in every church that you go to, yes, doing sir. singles conferences, doing married conferences and stuff like sure. that. And just, you know, sure. just, and it's great that in the church we can laugh and we can laugh no and have we a need good time. It. We got to, man. Yeah. We, we, we got to have it. Uh, man, listen, I've been enjoying talking to you today. Yes, hey, sir. man, y'all give it up for my boy, Marcus Wiley, y'all. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, Our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? 
Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, when I tell you I enjoyed this episode, boy, my boy Marcus Wiley came to show up and show out. It was hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. I love it when I can just sit back, kick it, laugh. I love to laugh, as y'all know. So uh, thank you, Marcus, for blessing us on the podcast. Well, here's my favorite part of the Dear Future Wifey podcast when I speak to my future wifey. Dear Future Wifey, your love is drawing me with each heartbeat. Your prayers are covering and guiding me to your lips. You're present, though you're absent. You're near, though you're far away. Knowing this journey leads to you strengthens each step I take. I can't wait to know your heart, your fears, the little things that make you smile, the uh, annoying things that bring irritation, and the beautiful way you express your love, not just to me, but to all those you love deeply. As much as I would love to bottle you up and keep you to myself, I know your wisdom and love is meant to be shared with the world. You bring healing to the brokenhearted. You bring clarity to those with impaired vision. Your voice soothes emotional ailments. You are a queen in every letter of the word. I will serve you until my last breath. I love you. Dear future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.